Good morning, my friends. I'm Irina Nish at Eclectica in Brookfield, Wisconsin. And if you have watched me before, you will have noticed that there is a change of location. So last night, if you were watching me last night, we had a little technical snafu, um, technical uh, lingo. So we, we had some difficulties with the video and uh, so we had to move the location. So here we are in the middle of the store, Eclectica, and today I'm going to share a fun technique with you. It is making a tassel using, uh, this is in fact, you know what, I will say this. This is actually part two, and I will show you what we did in part one. And if you missed part one, here, let me just put these down. I'm going to show you what we did. And just please know that there's going to be a link to part one. And we worked with a really eclectic collection of materials. And we also explored some different types of findings like these uh, locking crimps, which are super, super fun. And unless you have watched part one, you have probably never seen them before. So we'll have a link to that. Janice, Pam, and Kathy say good morning and hello. Good morning, Janice, Pam, and Kathy. Hello, thank you so and much, Lynn. ladies, for joining me. And Lynn. So thank you for joining me, everyone. And um, so I do, as I show you the samples for today, so, okay, just to, to be clear, this was the sample of what we did last week. So this was kind of a part one, and here's another sample of uh, an eclectic necklace using all sorts of components. We explored asymmetry a little bit. We explored mixing glass as well as um, stone and metal we have some kinetic components we have like some uh, little segments of chain and also again we have those really cool locking crimps lynn says good morning irena and tony good to see you good morning lynn and thank you good to see well i can't see you, can you see but <laughs> I, i'm so glad you can see us i wish we could see you as well and before i really get started so while I'm showing you my samples, I will also apologize for last night. So if you watched me last night, I had some technical difficulties. Um, and so my, my video was interrupted pretty abruptly and I never got to finish the project. I was doing the floral trellis project. So if you cannot figure out how to finish the project. If you don't have my inspiration book, um, it's a fairly intuitive technique, but I will most definitely be finishing that project next week, next Thursday. So if you tune in next Thursday, I will do a new project as well as finish the project from last night because my video was interrupted. Okay, so um, I just had to get that out, and now we can get started. Um, Nierka, Sue, and Sally say good morning and happy Friday. Good morning, Nierka, Sue, and Sally. And Lynn says the video is and clear this morning. Yay. Oh my goodness, that, that's fantastic. Thank you for saying that. But were you able to watch the and? No, I believe there is no and. It's, it's endless, sadly. Um, so good morning ladies. Happy Friday to you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, we in Wisconsin are having the quiet before the storm. We are expecting a little bit of a storm, but we do need a little snow this winter. So that's not necessarily terrible. Um, so I am actually showing you something that really has very little to do with today's project. But, you know, I thought I would show you just a couple of other tassels that I have done in the recent videos. Just because, you know, tassels are so popular and there are so many ways to approach tassels. And I love exploring them because, you know, you don't want to make the same old boring tassel every time. 
you want to mix it up. And so here is a tassel that is constructed so very simply just by stringing a few leftover pieces of chain on um, on a spiral, on, on wire. Well, I was, th I was thinking the word spiral, but really on any sort of a wire component. So, um, so here it is. And of course, this is a great chain soup project. But if you like the chain that I'm using, I actually made some fun chain assortments that look just like this. And they are in our Etsy shop. They're cut into six inch segments. And there's an assortment of, I believe, either six or seven and so just for a reference this is three inches so very simple construction very very easy and Erica says she's waiting for the storm too hoping to get some beating done oh yes good strategy Nierica I agree with you that is my favorite thing to do on a good snowy day so um, so now I'm just showing you another tassel, a different type of tassel, different type of construction. I used a glue in, this is actually a component that is meant for leather. And so uh, instead of using leather with this end cap, I glued in several segments of chain and this was just before the holidays. So this one is a bit on the blingy side and um, that, of course, is the bling is added by the cup chain. So that's kind of fun, too. So I'm going to put that down, and I think there's going to be a link to that as well. So now, let's get started on our actual project. Lynn says, great, would love if you could do the same for the components and the other tassels. The same um, as in using this type of construction, I'm thinking? Or putting it in the shop. Oh, putting it in the shop. So um, I think we are talking about maybe this tassel or possibly this tassel. So I didn't, um, I didn't create, you know, a specific assortment. But just so you know, we do have all of these components in the shop. I believe even this cap. And if we don't this cap, uh, if we don't have this cap just yet, we will make a point to remedy that. Sue says it's fun to hang tassels from purses, book bags, and computer cases too. Oh my gosh, I completely agree with you. In fact, you know what? As I'm creating these tassels, maybe I will ask Bonnie to grab me a really big lobster claw and we'll just make one like that uh, with a lobster claw. And then you'll see if you haven't clipped tassels to all your various important objects like zippers and computer cases um, and so forth, you'll see exactly how that works. So. Um, so let's get started. So as you remember, or you know, if you haven't seen it, then you probably don't remember. Last week, I started out with just some, some basics. You know, it's really good to review our good jewelry construction basics, like making wrap loops. So I'm just going to start with that, with this really awesome little uh, vintage reproduction bead. So this is a vintage reprodu uh, reproduction acorn. And last Friday, I talked a little bit about these vintage reproduction beads. So they're actually, oh, you know what, Bonnie? I forgot my round nose pliers. So while Bonnie is tracking down my, or or a bale making pliers, that's, that's all right too. But maybe you can still track down the round nose. Okay, so, so I'm actually, uh, my round nose is missing in action. So we'll use the bale making pliers. And this is the medium size bale making pliers. So my loop is going to be slightly on the large side. But I do love these tools. I seriously love these tools because, of course, not only do they give you a very consistent size loop, but also they give you a very nice round loop. So thanks, Bonnie. 
All right, so I am wrapping my loop. And so I'm just going to show you my design process as I design this type of a tassel. So we're going to clip off the extra wire and pinch the very end in with our chain nose pliers. So you never want that little end to stick out, so always use the tip of your chain nose pliers to pinch it in. All right, so this is a slightly organically shaped loop, and that's perfectly fine for this project. So what I'm doing is I am working on kind of what I think of as the focal point of the tassel. And I like to show you different ways of design or of designing because, you know, it's not a kit, it's not a pattern, and it's nice to just sort of have, you know, I don't want to call it a formula. It's more kind of a, a very um, flexible type of um, structure that allows interpretation. So here is the bottom of my focal point strand. Lynn says she always uses her wubbers when making earrings so she has perfectly matching loops. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. Wubbers are a fantastically good tool for something like that, especially when you make earrings. I really recommend those little tiny wubbers, you know, the smallest one. I adore those and I use mine all the time. So, I really like the basic construction here. And on this one, I actually used um, a vintage ring. Um, it's a beautiful vintage ring. I don't know if you can see the detail on it. It was made in occupied Japan. And um, it just makes a, a really good little addition of both color, shape, texture, everything. So. Um, just to mix things up, I'm doing something a little different this time. So I'm going to use, in fact, you know what? We have so many different options. Instead of using this ring, I have this awesome tree component, which I love so much. And I've used it on other projects. If you remember the stretchy bracelet that I made last week, I used that exact tree. So you'll see it being used vertically rather than horizontally. Joan says, um, good morning. Thankful you are demonstrating the Wubbers. I've been curious about those for a while. Oh, thank you for saying that. You know, I will make it a, a point to do a little bit more on the Wubbers. They actually come in so many different sizes. And um, one of these days, I'll do maybe like a whole exploration of the different Wobbers. And Lynn says, yes, I have all the sizes and recommend them too. Thank you, Lynn, for, you know, that's, that's great. I love it that you are adding that because it's great for people to hear it from other people because it's a, it's a great tool. Carlene says, good morning. Good morning, Carlene. Pam loves the acorn components. Fabulous! You know what? It makes the two of us. I love these acorn or acorn components too. In fact, to some extent, I had a hand in designing these because, you know, when we found out that there's an opportunity to make these beads using vintage molds and vintage cane glass, it was really up to me what colors we make in which mold. So while I didn't design the mold, uh, the molds themselves, I did design, you know, the color combinations for these beads. Allison says the tree component looks wonderful with the acorn bead. Thank you. I'm so glad you like it. Yes, I love it too. So, so look at how fun. And she also says a Wubbers 101 class sounds perfect. I would love to do that. You know, Wubbers actually come in so many different shapes, and I have tried some of them. I will say that my favorite are the round Wubbers, so that is probably what I will focus on when we do this. And I will, you know, I will write this down so that we make it a point to talk a little bit more about Wubbers. But in the meantime, if you are just finding out about Wubbers, just please know 
that the rounds come in uh, four different, actually five different sizes, and each size, okay, I'm struggling with this loop for some reason. You know, sometimes when you have a loop that is oval, let me just show you my trick. So if you have a little oval loop and kind of a large jump ring, and uh, you're having issues putting the oval link on your large gauge jump ring. Sometimes I will use one side of my round nose and stretch it out and make it a little bit more rounded instead of long and oval. And now this is so very easy. Look how easy it is to string my chain onto the ring. So it's just something you can do very easily. Robin says hi. Hello, Robin. Good morning. Happy Friday. So now I'm going to close my jump ring. And Lynn is wondering if the carnelian colored glass ring will be in the Etsy shop. We will make it a point to put it in the Etsy shop. It is not yet, but if you guys want it in the Etsy shop, it will be in the Etsy shop. So I will decide just how long to cut this chain. And so this really makes for a good central component for my tassel. The way that I build some of my tassels, not all, but these very kind of eclectic tassels, um, I build them from the center out. So the, the longest piece I make first, and then I sort of start building all the other pieces around it. So, so that we're not super redundant and we don't go super long, I did pre-make some of the components. And the way that I make them is so that um, the lengths vary. So I'm just going to lay them out so that you can see them, and I'll talk about some of them. Lynn says yay in reference to the, the ring. Oh, well, yay, <laughs> I agree. So it, it is a very exciting ring. And so I'll, I'll tell you a little story about the ring too. So as we go, so let me just kind of talk a little bit about the components. So some of these are connected directly to the chain. This one, for example, is um, a little rhyolite that I put a bead cap on. I could have used a different bead cap. I could have used this flower bead cap, uh, which is absolutely wonderful. I adore this bead cap. In fact, I used it here. Let me show it to you with the rhyolite first. Robin and loves the spiral component. Thank you, this spiral. And you know, I do have a video, in fact, this exact video on how to make these spirals. And um, so we will have a link on how to make a good spiral. So I hope you guys watch it if you haven't yet. And so in the meantime, so I was talking about this little flower cap. So this could have been very nice right somewhere in the middle of the tassel. However, I'm really considering putting it on top of the tassel. So I'm just going to save it for that. And um, also, let me just refer back to last week's project. And I did use that little cap also and I'm just showing you that you can mix and match different components and uh, make it very eclectic. The more interesting eclectic things you put in your piece the, the more interest there is the, the, the more things to look at. I guess that's you know that's kind of a, a no-brainer so I love these fun asymmetrical pieces. So here I have a little filigree bead and uh, let's see so now I am going to gather, actually, first let me just backtrack to this leaf component. So this is something I would really like to share. Let me grab a leaf and I will show you what I did with this little leaf component. So sometimes this is what I do. Instead of just using a wire, I will use a ball pin. So you can see this is my ball pin. It's I want to say it's 20 gauge and um, I'm just going to start shaping it just by making well maybe not quite so far um, 
I'll make a little bend right there, something like 10 millimeters from the ball. And so now I will string one of my vintage leaves. And so instead of using just a piece of wire and making a wrapped loop with the wire, I'm going to make a wrapped loop with a little ball at the end. And it's just going to give me a little bit of a more organic look. Okay, I'm just still playing with my loop. Okay, so there I formed the loop. So if you know how to make a wrap loop, that's exactly what I'm about to do with the ball end of the ball pin. Okay, so I will hold on to the loop. In fact, I'll cross over just a little more. So I'll hold on to the loop with my chain nose pliers and then I will use my flat nose pliers. If I had uh, another pair of chain nose pliers right here, I probably would have used that. But you know, whatever you have at hand. So I just wrapped the ball end around the loop. And so now I have this very organic little component. And then of course, in order to connect it to something, you're going to want to, so here, Here's what it looks like. I hope you can see that really well. And so now in order to connect it to our piece of chain, we're going to make another loop. And you know, if, if we wanted to, we could even put a bead on here. You know, it's an option. In fact, that's kind of fun. Or if you want to leave the bead off, that's okay too. So let me just keep the bead on here. And um, so because we are running out of wire, I'm being a little stingy um, with leaving a very small space right here, which is perfectly acceptable. And so now I'm going to make my loop, take the end of the wire, cross it over. Now, if I'm planning to connect it to something, I am just going to do that right now. So there we go. I have a little piece of chain right there. And now we're going to hold on with our chain nose pliers and use that little and to make a wrap loop. Robin says, yes, last week's video was so cool. I got torn away because of no power and had to watch later. Still want to order the acorn beads and the locking crimps. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for mentioning that. So, um, yes, that was kind of a part one. I actually meant to do this project in the same video, but sometimes I really underestimate um, how much time everything is going to take. So I literally ran out of time. So there it is. So we just connected to the chain. And Pam says, brilliant use of a ball pin. Oh, thank you, Pam. I'm so glad you like it. So it just gives us a more organic look, something a little bit unusual. And Lynn says, thank you, Irina. You just gave me a solution for some of the checked glass drops I have. Yay! I am so glad. Thank you for saying that, Lynn. Thank you. Okay, so, all right, guys. So moving right along. So maybe, in fact, I will swap out this new component for the old component, or maybe I will use them both. Who knows? But now, it's, I think it's time to gather all these little components onto a piece of wire so that we can make um, a tassel. All right, so I'm going to use a 22 gauge wire, although I could probably have even used a 24 gauge wire for this. And um, I will start making a wrap loop. This is a nice big loop that I'm making. So there is my loop. And I am just going to, you see how I laid out the order of my tassel? You know, maybe I will swap some things out. All right, so I want to put this leaf right here and maybe this guy right here and um, something like that. We'll see how that works out for us. And I'm just going to string in that exact order. 
so everything just goes on to the short end of the wire just because of course it's easier to string from the short end and I'm um, just so all of the components are going into my loop and they're going to all have a party okay almost done so now let's see how this looks and I am pretty sure let me look at my uh, somewhere I have a bead cap right here so you kind of want to estimate how the the chain is going to fill the cap and it looks to me like this is going to be just right now if I wanted to I probably could squeeze a couple more pieces of chain but if um, you know it, it's it's kind of it's it's just going to work out really well without the extra pieces so I think we'll just continue and so I'm going to hold on to my loop as I wrap that little end and I'm probably not being quite as careful as I would if this were going to be visible so I'm being just a little bit more sloppy because this is going to hide inside of the bead cap Robin says wow that looks so good yeah thank you thank you so much I, <coughs> I I'm kind of liking how this is turning out as well. So now we're going to do, you know what, this is too much wire. I'm just going to cut some off. So we're going to do a little uh, fitting or a little dress rehearsal, right? So we're going to put the, the cap on. So there is this cap, but wait, there's more. We have so many different options. Lynn says, loving this, Irina. Thank you so much, Lynn. Thanks, I'm, I'm enjoying demoing this. This is very fun. I love this cap. This is a super fun cap. I'm kind of liking it better than the first one. And then I'm also going to try that little bellflower, which I really like as well. This is super fun, but I think I like the second one. So I think we'll go with contestant number two and uh, yeah I think it really fits the tassel in terms of design and color again I think it just adds some really nice detail and so now we're going to make another um, another wrap loop but before we make the wrap loop I'm going to decide so I just realized that this um, this little wrap on the loop actually sticks out so there are a couple of things I could do number one I could find a little bead which I don't really have any little beads right here in front of me but if I had a little bead you know what here let me just maybe use this bead I don't know if this is small enough it could be so if I put a bead on here and the bead is too large to go through. Yeah, maybe Bonnie can find me like maybe even a two or a three millimeter bead, anything at all. Oh, look at Bonnie, she's so awesome. I'm telling you, Bonnie knows everything and where to find everything. She is the awesomest ever. Lynn says auditioning bead caps, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, thank you. So uh, can you see that? I just have a little daisy spacer right on there. And now, if I string through my bead cap, my wrap is going to be hidden. So how cool is that? That's a nice trick. And the other thing I can do, which actually I think what this is what I am going to do this time, I just wanted to show you how to deal with larger holes on bead caps. So uh, what I'm going to do this time, I'm actually going to let this little wrap poke right through because I'm going to wrap right over it. How is that? So I will make a 90 degree angle. As you know, every good wrap loop starts with a 90 degree angle. 
then we use our round nose, or I suppose we could have used our bail making pliers. And I'm going to make a loop. So there's my loop. So now, instead of wrapping over bare wire, I'm actually going to wrap over that little twist. And it's just a slightly different look. It's a heavier, um, you know, it's just a heavier wrap. It looks like a really chunky wrap loop. And I'm making it really snug by squeezing as much wire as I possibly can into that little space. So I think this is just a slightly more organic look, which I like for this type of a project. So now we'll snip the end of the wire and tuck it in as usual. Pam says, hello, I love this. Thank you, Pam, and hello to you as well. Okay, so there it is. There's our wrap loop, and you can see how this is a little bit chunkier than my original wrap loop because this is a single one, um, and this coil is actually a double coil. All right, so now what do we do with this? Well, there are quite a few things that we could do with it, so let's explore them. Sally says beautiful, and Carlene says love. Thank you so much, Sally and Carleen. So if we use a jump ring, now we can connect it to a number of things. For example, we can connect it to a bale. So I will show it to you with a bale. And of course, a lot of people love bales, and now you can just string it onto any piece of chain or make a necklace around it. So you can do anything at all. Um, Pam says, are the acorn beads in the Etsy shop? They are indeed, Pam, yes, and thank you for asking. And Christine says, hi everyone, can we see your bracelet? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hi Christine, yes, you can see my bracelet, absolutely. So I'll come back to what we can do with a tassel in just a moment. So here's my bracelet, and my bracelet is actually not just a bracelet. Everything that I own jewelry-wise is essentially a transformer of sorts. So uh, some of you, if you've watched me for a little while, you know that all of my jewelry consists of parts that can hook into other parts because they are lobster claws. So this in particular can hook into, in fact, I have a couple of um, necklace parts for, for you know, the later part of the demo, but I'll just kind of preview this. So this could be in front or it could be in back. So this could be worn as a necklace if I connect it to another part. And when I don't wear it as a necklace, sometimes I wear it as a bracelet. So I make things so that they can be multifunctional. So, and a little bit later, as soon as I put a ring on our tassel, I will show you what else I do with some of my necklace parts. Sally says, good idea. Thank you, Sally. All right, so now let's explore a few other things that we could do with this. All right, so Bonnie was kind enough to bring me some lobster claws, and look at this really enormous lobster claw. This is really cool. So if you want to say clip this onto a purse or something else, look at this. This is super fun. It's, it has a little fun detail and um, it just clips onto anything you want. Christine says thank you for showing the bracelet. Oh, my pleasure, Christine. Thank you for asking. So now if we want to change our mind, we are going to open this jump ring and we're going to put it on um, a round ring. In fact, I think I may need a slightly different jump ring. I need a bigger jump ring for this. So here I found a um, jump ring that's twisted. I love these twisted jump rings. Check this out. This is just another little 
uh, detail that you can add just by using textured jump rings. Kathy says, good morning. Sorry I'm late. I will rewatch from the beginning. Oh, good morning, Kathy. Well, you know what? You missed a lot of things because actually I talked about um, last night too. So again, you know what? For anybody who joined us a little bit later, I will say, guys, last night's video, sadly, was interrupted. We had some technical difficulties because probably because of the weather. So... Um, whether it was weather or maybe it was just Facebook um, having issues. But anyway, so sadly, I didn't get to finish my video. It got cut off. Well, I finished it, but really nobody was there to see it because um, it was um, interrupted. So I will finish and, and demo the technique next week, Thursday. So if you miss the end of Thursday's video, I will be doing it next Thursday. Lynn said this says this is such a great show Irina maybe my favorite along with making the spiral components oh my gosh Lynn you're so kind you are like making my head really big thank you so much so okay so let me just share this a lot of my pieces are like this um, so I make them with some type of a ring and so here's one um, one example of that here's another example and so if you saw my everyday jewelry half of my jewelry ends on some some type of a ring component and here's why because as you saw before i make all these little necklace straps that can actually be the back or the front and so how this works is something like this Kathy says that's good to hear. Thank you, Kathy. So, so this is just a very simple lark's head knot. And so now I can connect this um, uh, necklace component to another necklace component of any length. So this could hang shorter, it could hang longer. Some of my pendants actually and with, um, you know, just like a single pendant that ends with a ring. And again, that allows me to wear it longer or shorter. Or maybe you just want to change the color of your necklace without changing the actual pendant. So here's one. So the first one is the pre-night one. Here's the second one with the garnets. And I love both of those very much. Um, and so now I will string my garnet necklace through my ring. So having that ring at the top of your whatever piece that's supposed to be a centerpiece is really convenient because now you can wear it not only long or short or in the middle, but you can swap out the, the actual components of the necklace itself and give yourself a different look just about every day and as you saw it literally takes seconds it's not a lengthy process so you know I love playing with my jewelry every morning when I get dressed it just makes me happy so now let me uh, show you a variation on the tassel and again this one I finished with a ring and so I just wanted to show you that well this this is kind of a cheater tassel okay so we're going to make this one super super fast and how do we make a tassel super fast well actually we let someone else make it we use a tassel that is already finished and these i want to say we have in our etsy shop right uh tony is making a face like he doesn't know so lauren says no Oh, okay, so apparently we don't have these in our Etsy shop, but we will actually make sure to put these in our Etsy shop. And these are really cute, they're very inexpensive, they're very versatile, and check out what I'm about to do. I'm actually going to pull it into a different bead cap. Nora says, playing with jewelry, what could be better? Yay, thank you, Nora. Right, that's what I'm saying. And Kathy says, this idea of interchangeable pieces is so clever. Thank you so much, Kathy. 
And Robin says, great ideas, love your videos. Thank you so much, Rob. And ladies, you are so good to me. Thank you. Okay, so did you see what I just did? I just started making a wrapped loop. Before wrapping it, I uh, strung my tassel onto the loop. All right, now we'll hold on to the loop with our chain nose pliers. We'll make a super quick wrap. We will snip this off. We don't actually even have to trim it because it's going to be hidden. We're going to use that little spacer that Bonnie gave me earlier. See that little daisy spacer? All right, so we'll just let it fall all the way down to the loop. Put the cap over the tassel and check this out. Now we have the beginning of a designer. Oh, why does this not fit? I have no clue. You know? I don't know. They might be slightly different in um, shape. So while Bonnie is looking for another one, we're just going to ad lib a little bit. So this tassel has a little cap. I'm going to see if I can make the little cap smaller by squeezing the petals that make up the cap. So let's see if this works for me. Lynn says, does anyone else choose their necklace first and then their clothes? Well, isn't that like the only way to do it, Lynn? That's the only way, right? So, oh, are you okay, Bonnie? <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so you know what? Bonnie is looking for a cap for me, but in the meantime, I managed to get this almost in and I actually don't mind that the little petals are sticking out it just looks like a little extra detail on this cap so I'm going to go with that you know sometimes you just have to improvise as you go and so now I will start my wrap loop Pam says thank you I just ordered the acorns Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Pam. I really hope you enjoy them. They come in such beautiful colors. Some of them are kind of very unusual color combinations. They are, again, they're, you know, they're made out of vintage glass, and that vintage glass cane is so beautiful, and you don't find those colors anymore. You know, many years ago, Tony and I used to run around the East Coast. I don't know if everybody knows this, but, you know, I'm just going to tell you a story. So um, the East Coast, and specifically Providence, Rhode Island, used to be the capital of American jewelry making. And so there used to be so many factories on Rhode Island. And um, so 20-some years ago, we ran around and bought a lot of beautiful vintage glass. And, and this is because, of course, sadly, a lot of those factories were going out of business because everything was moving to China. So we, um, we bought as much beautiful vintage glass as we possibly could. And here's the tassel with the loop, by the way. And that worked out, I think that worked out quite nicely, even with the little petals sticking out. And of course, now we can add the acorns to any of the strands of chain that we want. So we could just make it a single acorn, we could make it multiple. So just for fun, I'm going to, so let me show you, I was going to use three acorns. I think I really like these three colors together. How fun is that? So this is like the, the red with a little bit of the smoky, it almost looks like smoky quartz with a little red in it. And um, then this beautiful chartreuse. And this one is really unusual. It's a purple with some red in it. And so I'm going to string one of these on a head pin. And actually my head pins are heavy enough where I can just use, um, I can make a simple loop. And this gives me an opportunity to review a simple loop. Robin says, love that. Thank you, Robin. And so I made a 90 degree angle. We're going to make a loop, just going in the opposite direction. Close the loop, and then in order to incorporate it, 
in um, in our chain, we're going to open the loop as if it were a jump ring like this to the side. And let's see if I can squeeze this into one of the little chain strands. Okay, so this seems to be a nice little open loop, but this is a tiny chain, so I may end up using, well, actually, no, I was gonna say, I may end up using a jump ring, but it looks like I don't have to, so there it is. So there is my one bead. And of course, you can incorporate as many extra beads as you want. Now, I do want to point out on my sample, you can see how I made the chains different lengths. And that is just very simple. You can um, cut some of the chain to the lengths you want. So here, maybe we'll make this the shortest one. So we'll just cut that. And so now we have a little short segment of chain to incorporate another bead. But I'm not going to demo that because I'm running out of time. And it's the same exact technique as we just did. So I do want to make sure that I show you that you can even, when you use this bead cap, you can even incorporate a little leaf component by using a small jump ring. On this one, actually, I'm not able to because my original cap that is connected to, to the tassel sits quite, um, um, quite low. But I just realized that this is not an identical bead cap. But if you are using one of these filigree bead caps, that fits a little bit looser. It's really fun to incorporate a little charm. And also, I incorporate another, uh, incorporated rather another little charm right next to one of the acorns, and that's really fun. In fact, these little leaves almost remind me of, um, of oak leaves. They're like little teeny tiny oak leaves. But of course, it could be anything, so I have all these little organic pieces, even a little tiny owl that could be incorporated in this tassel. So you can do whatever makes you happy and um, just design according to your own creative sensibilities. And so just to review what we did, here I have the variation which incorporates the um, the commercially made tassel in it. So this is like the, the quick way to make the tassel your own. Or you can, bid it, uh, you can build it from the very beginning and really design it, really make it your own. Well, either way, you can really make it your own. So before I um, bid you goodbye for today, I do want to mention a couple of things. So, so many things to talk about and so, so little time. So, um, I am going to Tucson in just a couple of weeks, which I'm getting very, very excited about. And so, Tucson is where we meet a lot of our suppliers for stone and other things. So, if you, if you have uh, your favorite stones, if you have favorite trends, please, let us know in your comments. We would love to hear from you because as I go buying in Tucson, I, of course, I buy a lot of things that I like, but I also bring a big list with me. And that list is generated by you guys. So, you know, our wonderful customers from the store and uh, my friends who watch me. So please, if you could, um, Tell me what your favorites are, what you hope to see me bring back from Tucson. Pam says, love your designs. They're so unique and creative. Thank you so much, Pam. And, um, okay, so let's see. Um, so many things to say. So I already told you that next Thursday I will finish the project from last night, which sadly got cut off. Um, so I will definitely do that. And, um, and I look forward to 
to talking to you guys again next Thursday and Friday. Thank you so much for watching me today and have a wonderful and creative day. Oh, there's one more. Carla says, good idea for the pre-made tassel. I'm not always thrilled with the plain caps that come on them. Oh, yes, I agree. Uh, thank you for saying that, Carla. And, you know, I agree about the pre-made caps. Sometimes they're not the prettiest. And this way we can um, cover that pre-made cap and uh, make it beautiful. And Robin says, good sh going shopping at our Etsy shop after this. Oh, thank you so much, Robin. And Dee says, thank you, Irina. Love the video. Thank you so much, Dee, and thank you so much, everyone, for watching me. Have a beautiful day.